Well, it is a decent little bucket of compute power. Hey, this episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All the folks who share content on social media and the incredible generosity of my patrons at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. More info on those awesome nerds later in the video. I have to streamline some of this review a little bit. After encountering malware on previous Ace Magic systems, I promise I would not just review boycott the brand. I feel we should continue to track the progress of their support and their promised solutions. It's still a brand selling products and consumers might see a good deal and jump on one and we want to know what state the company's in. I have to continue, unfortunately, categorizing Ace Magic and this AOC collaboration as an option more for system builders and tinkerers, maybe a little less so for the general public. I was sent this, the AOC AM16 for review. It's a punchy little Nook clone with an AMD 5700U, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. By all accounts, a monster little mini PC. Well overkill for most folks daily browsing and home PC needs. But on firing it up, we still see that troubling abbreviation of the Windows setup process, like three pages of options, you agree to a TOS, and then you're right into the desktop. So we know Ace Magic is still altering how Windows handles setup and account login. They say they're doing this to help streamline that onboarding, but I would really prefer they just go through the regular Windows setup. And though it no longer flags as malware in Windows security or in malware bytes, I'm still concerned by the pre-installed software and the end dev program that's still on their systems. That was one of the big red flags from previous Ace Magic systems. As such, right at the top of this video, I can't recommend a box like this broadly unless the user or the person supporting the user is comfortable wiping out the pre-installed Windows OS and installing their own operating system. If you would like a little bit more information on this entire saga that we've been going through, I have a couple different videos and then an awesome, a fantastic video with my buddy Snubs. My friend Shannon Morse took the time to sit down and we chatted out about uh, cybersecurity, protecting your data, and some best practices for not only setting up a new PC, but then dealing with malware you find after you've set up a new PC. I've got that video linked down below. Looking at a lot of these mini PCs, very generally, I feel it's worth recommending that course of action for most inexpensive mini systems sold, if only to keep things nice and tidy and maybe get rid of some pre-installed bloat. But I currently don't feel Ace Magic's recent changes to distribution have completely earned back the consideration to use one of these straight out of the box. It feels a little nitpicky to keep bringing up, but I really wish they weren't messing with our Windows settings, especially as you're setting one up. Back to the AM16 specifically, the specs here are solid, and this could do battle with a bare bones system where fitting 32 gigs of RAM and a decent SSD, you might be able to beat the price on rolling your own. Even if you had to install a new copy of Windows, this could be cheaper than a bare bones system. This is a familiar form factor if you've been following my channel. It's a plastic shell that feels inexpensive, but on a system you won't be handling once you've set it up. 65 watt power supply, an HDMI cable, and a mounting bracket are all included in the box. And getting inside this system was actually a little tricky. The adhesive on the feet did not want to give up. I had to get a, I had to get a credit card in there and wedge it and really pry these little suckers off. Once I got past the feet, it's just four screws. You pop this off and you get to the drive caddy if you'd want to add a SATA SSD. Then another four screws to move that caddy and you get into the proper guts. I'm really happy to see Lexar RAM in a 2x16 config, but I couldn't see who made the SSD. I was too afraid to peel that heat sink off given how hard the adhesive has been to work with. Nothing like prying a couple memory chips off an SSD. Some other interesting design choices inside the box. There's another slot for an M.2, so this could be a killer solution for folks wanting to pack a ton of storage in a small form factor. I don't love the placement on this battery under the main SSD. The wireless card is from a company I'm not as familiar with, but Bluetooth and Wi-Fi performance has been reasonably good on my home network. And this is another mini PC I've tested recently that does not have an SD card slot. At least this time, there just doesn't seem to be one on the motherboard. It's not like a previous PC I just reviewed that had an SD card slot 
that was covered up by the case. We got a good collection of ports on the front and back, and it's what we've come to expect. And the performance is also well understood at this point. It's a Ryzen 5700U chip with Vega graphics. If Vega even supports newer titles you like to play, expect to play them at the lowest resolution and low graphic settings. If old school emulation is your thing, this is going to be a great option for classic consoles. It really is fun there. For other workloads, especially CPU bound tasks, it's a very good machine to use for family computing. If you wanna edit some photos, uh, work on documents and spreadsheets, maybe even do a little light video editing, working with 4K video files, this is all reasonable to expect on this tier of Ryzen. It's more than what you would need for a student grade machine working with documents and school apps and web services. Just as one quick little point though, I've recently switched back over to using an Intel system for my Plex server, just as we still seem to get slightly better hardware transcoding support for things like Plex using a media server. My AMD builds have been very good at handling that kind of video throughput. Comparably priced Intel systems, especially if a couple generations old hardware just seem to be a bit better. Especially that this is a U series processor. We also get the benefit of running on the cool side. Again, only a 65 watt power supply and the slightly chunkier case helps with airflow. And you'll hear the fans kick on under load but they run pretty quiet. They run quieter than many of the metal shell Nook clones I've used recently. So where are we with Ace Magic and this, the AM16? I'm still disappointed in Ace Magic's software decisions, but it's honestly not a bad little machine. The issue you're gonna run into is timing and sales price. It's utterly useless to review these machines at MSRP as prices fluctuate wildly. I've had the AOC for a little more than a month and the price has jumped around a lot. I've seen it on sale as high as $499 and as low as $350. I made a comment, I don't know, probably a bit more than a year ago that as more laptop chips hit this market, the price difference per generation of processor was gonna get squeezed. Like 50 bucks might be the difference between a Ryzen 5000 and a Ryzen 6000 chip. That kind of holds true here. This box is easier to consider when it swings to one of those lower prices, but if it starts creeping up anywhere near 400, it's still a decent buy, but you're in territory where you might be able to score a more powerful CPU for the same price, maybe a little bit more. With AMD and Intel playing catch up to Qualcomm on all the AI stuff, we're getting a flood of parts hitting mini PCs and laptops are going on solid sales. I do not believe we'll see the same variety of low cost systems using Strix Point or Intel Lunar Lake as quickly as we've seen five, six, seven, and 8,000 series AMD parts and even Intel Core Ultras now in mini PCs. Especially not for the increased chip costs, that's gonna make it more difficult for brands like Geekom and Ace Magic. I'm wrapping all this up, the verdict, I love mini PCs and I love Nook clones. The hardware here is respectable. And if you're comfortable doing a little OS maintenance, reinstalling Windows or flipping to a Linux distro, I think you could have a lot of fun with this box if you score it on a good sale. And as I play around with a few more systems and I like to get in there and tinker and benchmark, comparing laptop parts and mini PCs against proper laptops, the first folks who get to see the results from all of my performance testing are my amazing patrons over at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. There's an early access tier, the private discord, production diaries, all of my videos in 4K, but they're just a really cool group of nerds. So I hope you'll check them out. I, I greatly appreciate everybody that can help support their favorite content creators, especially if you're out there sharing videos across social media, which really helps us with algorithms. But if you have the means, I hope you'll check out the community at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. A huge thank you from the bottom of my heart as they are helping to keep the lights on here in the gadget lab. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere, but these days I'm spending most of my time on the Mastodons, a lot less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams and definitely not on the Twitters and I will catch you all on the next review.